Hi there, my name is Jackson Hayes, and in this video I want to talk about my digital setup for school. Uh, for the past year or so, I've been able to slowly refine my system for keeping track of everything and staying on top of homework and classes and all this stuff. Um, I know some people use things like planners or sticky notes, which is fine, but for me, I wanted something that was a little bit more automated and something that I could kind of access wherever I was on whatever device I was, and so this has really kind of helped me do that. Um, I know it can be really difficult these days, especially with online classes of trying to keep track of everything. So hopefully this video is helpful, um, but uh, without further ado, let's jump into the computer. All right, so first, just getting started here in the calendar, I'm using Google Calendar, and I know some people like to store things like homework inside of their calendar, and while that's fine, for me personally, I think it ends up getting really cluttered. So for me, I just put things that are time-based, so the actual classes of like when they start, and where they are, things like that, that goes in the calendar here. Just so you're aware, all these classes are just kind of dummy classes I've created. I'm not actually in school yet, that starts next week, um, but this is just kind of for demonstration purposes. But this is exactly how I'd set it up. Um, so if I was taking it to 102, I have that here, I have it repeat automatically. Okay, go away. I have it repeat automatically, you know, Monday and Wednesday, and then it will end on May 6th or whenever the classes end. Um, and that just repeats throughout the whole thing. So we just go through the next week, there it is, all that stuff. Um, and then of course you can modify individual events, say something got canceled or whatever, and you want to be able to just delete it, you can delete it without deleting everything else. So that's how I do that. I also put things like uh, exams that are time-based, that have to be somewhere at a certain time, that I would put in the calendar, but I wouldn't put like homework and stuff. While it is time-based with the deadline, I find it easier to use to do that in a different kind of platform. We'll do that in Notion, which we'll see in a second. So that's my calendar. I just create a specific calendar specifically for classes that's separate from my personal calendar or my work calendar or anything like that, just to kind of add separation to everything. Uh, but that's how I do it in Google Calendar. All right, so now let's jump into my Google Drive. This is actually my Google Drive. As you can see, I have taken a couple classes here. Um, but what I've done is basically, right before the semester starts, gone through and cleared out everything so that it's just very straightforward to manage all my files. I'm, I get really tired for me personally when I don't organize everything and things get a little bit sloppy, it always just kind of bugs me and irritates me. So I like having these kind of very distinct uh, folders for everything and I put it inside of my school Google Drive or Google account because yes, I could put it in my personal Google account but then it starts filling up whereas I have this other school account, which I might as well use. So instead of using my personal Google account, I use the school one. So that's what I do. There's the file folders. It's pretty straightforward. You can always do this in you know, iCloud Drive, OneDrive, whatever, other Drive, Dropbox, whatever. I don't like Dropbox. But anyway, you can do it digitally. This is how I do it. It's pretty easy. Before we jump into Notion, um, if this video has been helpful to you at all, if you've gotten some ideas from it, I'd encourage you to subscribe. I don't publish videos like every week or anything like that. I'm trying to, but time is limited. Um, but you know, when I do try to make videos, I try to make them as helpful for people as possible, whether you're a filmmaker, a photographer, a digital creator, a student in this case. Um, so yeah, subscribing is free and it would help me a lot. Back to the video. All right, so here is my Notion dashboard. My Notion setup for managing all of my homework, uh, classes, notes, assignments, all of that stuff, it's right here. Now, this is just mock data because I'm not currently in class. That starts next week, so yay. But um, this is exactly how it set it up, so we're just gonna kind of use this as kind of an example of how I would do it. Now, you can totally build this yourself. I'm gonna show you all the bits and pieces so you could totally design it yourself. However, if you wanna save some time or if you're just kind of new to Notion and you wanna support me, I do have it available for sale at uh, the link in the description. It's gonna cost about as much as a Starbucks coffee, so try to keep it cheap for y'all um, if you want to save some time. Otherwise, you could just totally build this yourself. It's gonna be super easy. Uh, but yeah, let's get started. All right, so right at the top, I've got two kind of very useful links and you can add more if you need more links, but for me, these two have been the most useful. The first one is files, which is for my Google Drive, which we mentioned earlier, and then the school site, which is D2L in the case of University of Arizona, unless you are a professor who decides to be different or annoying and use some other platform. But generally it's D2L for the University of Arizona. And then below that we've got classes uh, and then assignments and notes, and we'll get into that in a second. But first let's start with the classes. All right, so opening up this first class page, and this is English 102, um, mock data as you can see with my instructor being Grogu um, but again this is just a database this is a page in a database that has various bits of information we got a course link which is google.com obviously not the course link this is just mock data the final grade means it's in progress this is just a single select of 
you know, various options. And once I finish the class, hopefully with an A, I would click A here. Uh, right now it's in progress. Um, notes uh, that's linked to another database, the, the one on the first page with all my notes and I can link it to a specific class. So we'll talk about that in a second. And we've got the type. So this is just general information about the class where I don't have to go to some archaic school website to try to find this information. I just set it up at the beginning and it's done. Um, contact information, Grogu at Skywalker Academy. Um, and then office hours, link to a syllabus here. You could do this and then just add a link, paste it there so you can quickly jump to the syllabus if you need. And then course description if you care, you don't really need to put that there. And then we've got an assignments. Now this is a linked database is I believe what it's called. Um, and basically it filters that linked database with a couple things. So first of all, we've got the class. Um, additionally, what we would actually want is where the submitted is unsubmitted, meaning things that you haven't submitted yet, I want to be able to see them. If you've already submitted it, you don't really care about it anymore, so that would disappear. Basically, this is a way to see just what assignments are due for the specific class. And again, right now there's only one item, but say you had a ton of things, so you'd gone through the syllabus and inputted all this stuff. You might want to fill, uh, sort it by, um, you know, let's say due date ascending or whatever, or descending, whatever, whatever floats your boat. But this is a way to see just the assignments due for this specific class. All right. So these links here just come from a link, link the page and then just English 102, boom. And there we have it again because it just got moved. But basically that's just a link to an existing page inside of the class's database. A little complicated, but it's just kind of how it works. All right, so this is the classes database, and this is where all your classes are stored. We can see all of our information in kind of a different way. One thing that's unique here is the fact that if I go to this little drop down menu, I have a template for our class. Click on that, it takes a second to load sometimes, but we go on the three dot here. We're just gonna go full width here. Um, okay, um, this is where I have kind of this pre-set up page specifically for classes. So if we were just to kind of pretend this is English 202, uh, whoops, not assignments. Instructor, we can create John Smith or whatever, and units three, course link, throw in the link there. Final grade, it's in progress maybe. Um, and then type, let's say it's online, right? We can go ahead and modify all this information here, as well as tweak this filter to just filter for English 202. And now it's looking for assignments for 202, which we haven't created any, so that's where that is. But that is really useful because now we can go back over here, link to page and English 202. Now, if I wanted, I could just move this here. If I wanted to give this a little icon, I could, let's say it's a mountain, which doesn't make any sense, but hey, it's just dummy data. I'm just gonna add a little spacing there. Uh, but yeah, so this is how I kind of link to those pages. They're from that initial database and they're just stored here. And this is a way to quickly filter through your, your assignments on a class basis. All right, so now moving on to the assignments view, this is a very useful way to keep track of what's coming up, but also have a little bit of buffer time or whatever you want to call it of some time that you can have to work on the assignment for a couple days leading up to the due date. For me, I hate having like eight things due on one day and being like, I gotta work on all this in one day. I like, you know, working on it over time leading up to the due date. Do I do that all the time? And no, I do not, but I try to. So the way I do this is this is another database. One of the properties here is a date property, but instead of having just a single date, I have it to be a range. So I've got a start and an end date. That way I can grab the due date as just as the last day there. And I could even, here for the, the end date, I could have a time. So if it's due at midnight, I typically just do 23.59. It's just easier. Um, and just to be able to track when things specifically do. Um, but that allows me to not only have the actual due date, but also the active range and not have these two things to modify. It's just one property to modify and then also updates for the due date itself. Also got something called Pomodoros, which allows me to keep track of how long a specific assignment might take. Um, assignment details is just like the instructions for the assignment submission link. I don't really use this all too much because it's just easier just to go the other way. But sometimes I like linking to like where to submit the actual document or audio file or whatever. That's where I put that. So um, then we've got the status. This is something I use more for when I have a bunch of things that are starting to pile up from all these different classes, perhaps around midterms or whatever. And instead of feeling overwhelmed, I created this thing called status, which allows me to see what's coming up 
and then what is active and what's inactive, allowing me to kind of focus on a couple assignments instead of being overwhelmed by a long, long list. So that's what I do. I don't really use it all the time, just around the time of like midterms and finals, but that is useful. And then I've got submitted and then day of the week. And that's another thing that you can use. I don't really use it all too much, but some people do, um, but that's there as well. So you can filter by day of the week and you can say, right, I'm gonna do this on Monday or Thursday or whatever, put that there, but we're not gonna use that here in this video. So yeah, that is how I have my assignment set up so I can keep track of when to start working on things and such. And of course you could just mark it as done and they would vanish out of here because this is filtered by where the due date is on or before a month from now and then submitted is unchecked. Additionally, you go to properties here and show on first load only 10 so that you know it's not a long, long list if, they, if you have a bunch of assignments coming up, um, but this is just one way to filter that. Now, another way to view this information is go here list view this is just yet another view of the same information but here it is sorted in what's coming up what time things are due what classes they're associated with what type of assignment it is and as well as a little checkbox so if you like viewing it this way and it's easier for you to kind of comprehend this is one way to do it otherwise you can use the timeline view which i find a little bit more helpful however when i'm inside an actual class i prefer just using the actual um just list view because that's just easier additionally notion seems to like to limit you to i think five uh timeline views per account if you're on a specific plan and so it's not unlimited like the other views are so that's also a thing but anyway those are my assignments additionally here i have this little drop down for quick ways to add various specific assignments it only saves you like two or three clicks but i find it useful there so you can do that as well all right so now moving on to the notes database this is just a way to keep track of notes whether those are handwritten on like an ipad and then exported as a pdf or something you actually just take notes with inside of notion itself so here i've got just one thing that was for this one lecture from english 102 it's an imaginary lecture uh the date might have been monday uh you can add a topic a little summary just like talking about the syllabus or something like that slides you can download the slides from the class and then upload them here if you want to have your own copy of them as well as attach handwritten notes if you did something like um, good notes or whatever and then exported that as a PDF. I find that super useful so you can keep track of all that right here. Um, and then when you're going to create a new one, you just hit new, whatever this is, lecture one for, I don't know, let's just say it was for meme 203. The date was today. The topic was, I don't know, um, the um distracted boyfriend meme um slides handwritten notes and you could just create notes here so i find that just to be kind of like an added bonus to this system to be able to keep track of your notes in addition to your assignments um plus it can be useful to reference things if you want to look back on a specific day you can just go and find that day and then grab the lecture from there so it's just a way to kind of keep track of all of that now of course this isn't like fully automatic i mean there's no way to like just automatically import all of your assignments into notion just with one click like you do have to go and open your syllabus or whatever at the beginning of the semester and go and add all your assignments personally i don't go and add all the assignments for the entire semester just because oftentimes things come up things get pushed around i just typically do it for the next two weeks or week um so then you know every sunday i just go in make sure everything's still up to date like as far as due dates go and then add any new assignments that have come up um, and just kind of like do this regular maintenance like once or every two weeks again it's not fully automatic but i find this to be much more useful than um you know just handwriting everything and then constantly having to update that like every day or whatever this is somewhat automated where you know things do shift as you know when it becomes friday it's going to shift over to there and you know it's just it is automatic in a lot of ways and this is a great way to kind of keep track of everything um also in a digital sense where if you happen to be on a different computer you could sign into your notion account and have all of your information right there. And so I think that's also a great bonus as well. You're not really locked to a specific platform because this is web-based. Um, and of course there are some issues with web, like it can be slow, or if you don't have internet and you have a problem, but generally you typically have internet, especially being at home most of the time. Um, and so I think this is just a really fun way to kind of manage everything. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to you in some way. I know school can be really stressful these days with COVID and everything and some things being online, everything's kind of just discombobulated. Hopefully this is a way to kind of consolidate everything and reduce a lot of that stress. Um, if you want to just create this yourself in your own Notion setup, go for it. If you want to just duplicate it with a single click of a button, you can also do that as well at the link in the description. That also supports me. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching. Uh, 
subscribe if you want. And uh, I'll see you all later.